In the previous video, we found what h of 5 should be. So now we're going to move on to find h of 6. So we're going to follow through the same procedure that we did in the previous video. So the first thing we're going to do is that we're going to write down the recursion formula for the relationship between the constants. So you have this recursion formula for the constants a of j. And these a of j are they're going to be featured in this polynomial. So as uh, is the same logic from the last video, if we find what h of y should be, we will be able to deduce what the Hermite polynomial should be. So in order to find h of y, we need to find these constants. And this recursion formula is going to help us because it gives us the relationship between these constants. So for any given value of a0, so a0 is some constant. We don't know what this should be yet, but for any given value of a0, you are able to deduce what a2 should be using this recursion formula. So we start off at j equal to 0. So we get negative 2, 6 minus 0, 0 plus 1, 0 plus 2, a0. And you can see this is just 2, these cancel out. So we get negative 6, a0. And then now that we have a2, we can deduce what a4 should be. So a4 is equal to negative 2, 6 minus 2, a2, so if 2 plus 1, that's 3, and then 2 plus 2, that's 4. And so uh, doing a bit of simplification, you see that this is just equal to 4, so this cancels out. So I get negative 2 over 3, a2. And a2, as we found, is equal to negative 6, a0. So I can just replace this with negative 6, a0. So the negative sign goes away, and I get 4, a0. So this is what a4 is equal to. And then given a4, we are able to deduce what a6 should be. So a6 by the recursion formula is equal to negative 2, 6 minus 4, a4. And for the denominator, it is 4 plus 1, 4 plus 2. So you see that this term here, this is equal to 2. Uh, if you come combine these, this is equal to 4. Uh, this is just a 5. This is a 6. So you see this. We can do a bit of simplification. So in the end, we get negative 2 over 15 a4. And then as we found just now, a4 is equal to 4a0. So I can just substitute this straight in, uh, 4a0. So we see that a6 is equal to negative 8 over 15 a0. So let's just summarize what we just found. So we found that we have, we started with a0, and then we're able to find a2, which should be equal to negative 6a0. So let's just write this down to summarize what we just found. And then a4 is equal to 4a0, and then a6 is equal to negative 8 over 15a0. And then for the subsequent terms, if I use a6 to try to de uh, derive a8, you see that it's going to be equal to 0. So a8, you see that if I substitute in j equal to 6, and you have some values in the denominator, it doesn't really matter because this is just 0, so this entire thing is just going to be equal to 0. And so all the subsequent terms, a10, a12, all the subsequent terms with an even subscript, they're all going to be equal to 0. So essentially for the, uh, for the uh, constants with an even subscript, these are the only ones that have a value. The rest of the other terms are all equal to 0. And then for the terms with an odd subscript, so a1, uh, a3, a5, and a7, they're all going to be equal to 0 because now that uh, we've chosen the recursion formula to stop when j reaches 6. We have no other way to stop the recursion formula for odd subscripts. So the only way for h of y to be normalizable is that the odd subscripts uh, terms are all equal to 0. So we know that a1, a3, a5, they're all going to be equal to 0. So this means that our h of y, which is once again given by this infinite series, so you get the pattern. This is actually just equal to a naught uh, minus 6 a naught y squared. So that's just uh, this term over here. I'm just substituting this right in. And then a3, that's equal to 0. And then we have the a4 term. That's so 4 a naught y to the power of 4. And then we have the a6 term minus 8 over 15 a naught y to the power of 6. So we're very close to deriving the Hermite polynomial. So we just have to repeat this process that we did in the previous video.
So recall that we were we are given a clue on how to derive the Hermit polynomial, and that the uh, coefficient of the highest power of y. So here uh, Griffiths uses this Greek letter uh, z, but I'm very bad at drawing this, so I'm just using y. Uh, so the highest power of, well in our case y, is 2 to the power of n. So in our case, in this case, it, we're dealing with the Hermite polynomial for n equal to 6. So the uh, coefficient of the largest power, so y to the power of 6, the coefficient of this term should be equal to 2 to the power of 6, and that's just equal to 64. So we're going to have to manipulate this in some way to make it so that this term has a coefficient of 64. So let's just do a bit of rearranging. So first of all, let's just pull the a naught outside. And then we're going to pull the 15 outside of the bracket as well. So pulling the 15 out, we get 15 minus 90y to the power 90y squared. And then we have 60y to the power of 4, and then we have minus 8y to the power of 6. And then now uh, we need to manipulate this so that this has a coefficient of 64. And then we can do that by multiplying this whole thing by negative 8 divided by negative 8. So this negative 8 is going to go inside this bracket, and then this negative 8 is going to uh, stick to the outside uh, constant over here. So this absorbs itself inside the denominator, so that becomes negative a naught divided by 120. And then this constant just goes inside the bracket, so this becomes negative 120 plus 720y squared minus 480y to the power of 4 plus 64y to the power of 6. So now we've controlled it so that this polynomial uh, for this term, it has a coefficient that's equal to 64. So this means that this entire polynomial is the Hermite polynomial we're looking for. So this whole term over here is equal to h6 of y. So this is the answer.